Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. Well, it's pouring with rain outside. We're stuck inside because of the coronavirus. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to just do a short video on what I do to produce a fly tying video. Now, some of you might be interested in that. Um, I usually don't have much of a fixed idea what I'm going to do. Uh, I typically browse one of my books, or I'll come into this one, the Forgot Flies book. I'll go through it and I'll pick something that looks interesting. Um, there's not much thought goes into that. It's just browse, take a look, and pick a fly that I think is going to work for the day. Uh, and once I've got to that stage, the next bit is to uh, prepare the materials. So let's go downstairs and have a look at that. Okay, uh, this is my fly tying bench uh, where I do my regular flies. I don't do any videos here. I've got my materials here, threads and what have you. Typically, I'll come through here and uh, after memorizing the uh, recipe upstairs, I find the materials I need and then I'll just take them over to my bench and get started. Inevitably, I get down here and I go, okay, was that a gold or was it a silver tinsel? And I have to run back upstairs, run back downstairs because it's all up here. I leave my books upstairs. I don't want to get head cement and feathers on them. So uh, there is a bit of memorization and of course, I'm going to forget something. But generally speaking, I'll be able to find what I want and I'll get going on the uh, pattern. If it seems like I'm always wearing the same shirts, it's because, well, I'm always wearing the same shirts. I keep a stock of them down here uh, and I'll just change them as I need them. Okay, this is the uh, basic layout of the studio. I've got my lights. This is camera up here is used for uh, taking a top view of the fly. I have the small uh, Olympus here, which has excellent macro, and I'm able to get a close shot of the fly. Plus, I have a camera right there, which is actually pointing at me. And I've got my mic. I've got a little tiny mixer here to provide power. I've got two Atomos units that I'd use for my recording, plus the SD card in this one, because that one doesn't play nice with the Atomos units. Well, on that, uh, you know, the desk can get kind of messy, but, it, you know, it's fly time. It's messy. Okay, this is my layout. I've got a screen up on top of that camera, and I've got these two screens to give me a view of the fly. Uh, so the one in front of me is the Olympus, and this one is the uh, camera above me. And it gives me a, a really good uh, view of the fly as I'm tying it. Once I'm finished recording, I'll take the uh, hard drives out of the Atomos units. I'll take the SD card out of the top camera, take them upstairs, plug them into my computer, and uh, upload all the videos to my software. Okay, you can see uh, I've got the stuff loaded up on my uh, computer now. This is Final Cut Pro 10 that I'm using. It's a uh, professional grade software. It allows me to do quite a few advanced things, not only with video, but with audio as well. I have a lot of audio problems in, in a, trying to uh, do uh, audio, uh, clean audio in a house. I mean, I've got you know, refrigerators running. I've got uh, my wife uh, doing stuff in the house. We can hear TVs and all sorts of other background noise, which I have to deal with. Also, you'll probably hear the reverb in this office. Uh, this office is not clean, it's not prepared for sound, so anything I do in here is gonna have that reverb noise. So audio actually tends to be more of a challenge sometimes than video. As far as the three cameras are concerned, I'm able to uh, splice between them very, very easily. The software makes it a piece of cake. I pick the uh, clip I want for what I'm trying to say, and then when I'm done, I do the titling, check through the video to make sure it's fine, I haven't made any dumb mistakes, or at least not too many dumb mistakes, and then I fire it up to YouTube. And then finally we get the video up to YouTube. I have to uh, go through a process of uh, monetizing it, um, putting in some extra information, making sure the tags are correct, all that kind of good stuff. And once it's ready, I make it public and people start looking at it. So that's basically it. I mean, it's, uh, it's a bit of fun to do. Uh, I can't complain too loudly about doing them. Um, it's always a challenge because usually I'm tying the fly for the first time. Often I haven't even seen the fly before except in a picture. So it's a question of, you know, looking in the book, memorizing the pattern, memorizing the recipe, memorizing any uh, backstory it might have, then going downstairs and trying to regurgitate that all in our camera. And <laughs> sometimes it works better than others. And not every video was perfect, and occasionally I have to redo them. Uh, but other than that, um, usually they come off the first time pretty good. 
So, uh, there's how I do my videos uh, for Hook Fly Fly Fishing. So I hope you enjoy them, and uh, if this rain um, quits and my sump pump stops running, I'll be able to do a few more. Cheers.